to you all. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, it's Mr. Tony from Kettle Kitchen. How you doing, buddy? Good, Miss Blue from Blue Self Reliance. How you doing, ma'am? I'm doing good, thank you very much. So, this was meant to be pre recorded. This <laughs> is fact, take two. This is take two. Um, and it was <clears throat> supposed to be because we've been talking for a while about doing like a podcast um, on certain different subjects and stuff like this. And I wanted to test it out for the time that, you know, I might be going into surgery, all of that kind of stuff and recovery. So we have stuff that's still going out. And then we discussed it a bit more. And after a little bit more consideration, we've kind of come up with this, which is the backup plan, which is it's about skills-based preparedness. Mm -hmm. Whether you want to take that as preparedness, prepping, whatever, whether that's for every day, short-term crisis, long-term big SHTF stuff, it's yep. entirely up to you. But the point is that what we want to do is we want to discuss skills that are useful in not only everyday life, but in any of those kinds of scenarios. And what we're going to be talking about today is canning in a crisis. Now, the reason that this is come up, sorry, carry on, go, 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 go. No, you go, you go, go. Okay, so the reason this has come up because of a comment that was made during um, somebody else's um, video, and I read it on the comments, and I thought, you know what, actually, I think this is something that really needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. We want to talk about the safety aspects and what's suggested and what not suggested in this kind of thing and have a few different conversations within this conversation about safety aspects, um, to do with your equipment, um, proper usage, all of that kind of thing, what's suggested, what's not, and what you can and can't do safely. Okay? Key is safely. Yes. The key words here are safely. The other thing that we want to say is this. We are in no way, shape, or form telling you what to do. No. <laughs> I am not your mother. Unless you're one of I'm my not kids. Your father, okay. Unless you're one of my kids. Yes. You know, but the point is you do you, but do you research? And what we want to do is give you a snapshot, because honestly, we're going to give you a snapshot of what the proper procedures are, what the questions are that most people ask about this kind of stuff. And we're going to do our best to answer as many of those as possible. And if you guys come up with new ones, please, please let us know in the comments and we will endeavor to answer them. Okay. Can, can, can I interject something real quick? Yes. <laughs> um, I see Heather's in with us, Milk and Honey Heritage Farms. She is. She had a very successful first live yesterday and I just want to commend her on that. She did a great job. It was awesome. It yes. really, really was, honey. I have to go back and watch it again, no, because I was sitting on my couch. I was far too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> because it was nearly pumpkin time for me, and I kind of fell asleep halfway through. Not your fault at all. My fault. Late at no. night for me. Okay? So I do so want to say hello to chat first. Um, let's have a and say hello to Suburban Hillbilly. will be back if she gets good news about her dog. Um, Annette from Heart Urban Homestead and Kitchen and Garden. Hello, my darling. Nanny Tam, hello. Heather from Milk and Honey Heritage Farms. This is ours. This is ours. We love you. So, yeah. How you doing? Okay. I have one other item to interject in that, that spot as well. Okay. Okay. No, yeah. Do we like it? Me, me and Blue have come to a conclusion and an understanding that we have different approaches to canning. She lives in a different country than I do. My country happens to be one of the three countries that does it the way we do it. And everybody else does it their way. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
This is not about my way's right, my way's wrong, nor is it about blue's way is right or blue's way is wrong. This is about standard protocol you need to take to be a safe food preserver in a crisis situation. Yes, but we're not looking at all different types, all different preserving methods in this one particular no. life. We are just going to be looking at canning. Yes. Okay. And canning meaning either water bathing or pressure canning. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, I don't pressure can. I water bath. Mr. Tony pressure cans and water baths. Okay. And, so and between so us, we can just about cobble together enough information to um, make a decent fist of it and give yeah. you guys the right direction to go and do your own research afterwards. Okay. Yep. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'll agree with it. There is one other one we didn't talk about in take one that I just realized, and I apologize for that. Okay. There's also steam canning, too, is another option over here. Wow. Okay. But that's a whole nother conversation. We didn't research that, so we won't talk about it. I just want to acknowledge that there is another way to do it, but yeah. That's but not our conversation. The two main ones that people do tend to be water bathing, pressure canning. Right. Um, and that's what we're going to be looking at is canning in a crisis. And that's yep. our topic today. There is something about canning foods that freaks me out. I know it's a psychological thing with me. Yeah, totally get that. So so one of the things one of the things earlier when you were talking and I tried to talk and you said go ahead and I said no you go ahead was for some people canning is a crisis. Yes. So you guys so just for some it. people canning is a crisis, let's be honest. Um So I was going to talk about this a bit later on but let, let's just do it now, okay? And let's just dive in right now. So for those of you who have been watching for a while, you will know about this story. For those of you who are new to the channel um, and are here um, and watching, I will explain why I do not can. Or one of the main reasons why I don't do pressure canning, okay? Sure. Now, when my kids were little, and I mean my youngest, who is now uh, 27, He's now 27. He was two years old, okay? So this is 25 years ago. We were living in Europe, rural Australia. Mm -hmm. Deepest, darkest, middle of nowhere, <laughs> okay? Um, that That's as polite as I can get about it. <laughs> now, I found a pressure canner in a secondhand charity shop. It had all its equipment with it. It had all its pieces with it. It had spare equipment with it. It had a manual with it. It had everything. Okay. The only thing it didn't come with was the box, which I've since found out. They tend not to come with a box. They just turn up the thing, apparently. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anywho, there, there, was, <laughs> there was no Google. Okay, my phone was a landline. I didn't have a me I didn't have a mobile phone even where I lived. If I had had a mobile phone, I wouldn't have had any coverage. So we had landlines, and the best that I could do for research was to go to the local library. So I did go to the local library, and it took six weeks to get books in, all about canning, and they were from the states, and they were all the books that you guys have about canning, or they had twenty five years ago about canning. And I had about six books that I had to work with because that was the limit that was allowed to take out of the library. Well, you maxed your limit out. Maxed my limit out, okay? And I spent the next two weeks absolutely 150% hyper, hyper focused into doing as much research as possible. So, not only that, but I went to the local CWA, which is the Country Women's Association, mm. which is similar in. Over here, we have the Women's Institute. They're mm. the guys that do all the cakes and cookies and jams and jellies and canning and preserving food and all of the things and raising funds for widows and orphans and all this kind of stuff. You know, you know what I mean. So yes. anyway, <laughs> they were the people to go and talk to, but none of them had ever done pressure canning. So there was nothing that I could 
get really out of them there. So um, I did my research that I could do. And on my very first canning expedition, because I'd even got the special jars and everything, and I'd, I'd done all that, I got those bought in. I was doing my first pressure canning, and that was, I think it was seven jars of water. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Ashley. So I was doing my first one, which was water, because it meant that I was testing out the system. I was trying to do everything that I was told to do. Um, I had, I think I had to put 10 pounds of pressure on the jiggler doodah thingy thing, um, because we were a little way up. Right. Not, not far up, but just enough that I had to have a 10 pound doodah on there. Um, and I had it all set up the way it said it had to be set up. And I did my thing. Right. And I was doing what I had to do. I then turned my back up, 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 up to that point successfully. Up to that point successfully, right? right? Up to that point successfully. I turned my back for less than two minutes. And I mean less than two minutes because all I did was I walked around one side of my kitchen table to the other side and the two feet to my sink. Mm -hmm. I started doing dishes. I did about five dishes, five at that point and i heard a noise behind me that scared me to death and my youngest son who was two came and grabbed me by my skirt and started yanking on me mm -hmm. and now this thing was going off its nut and something told me to get out of there and i did and i grabbed my son and we went out the door of the kitchen we got as far as the back door which was um trying to work it out so it was seven feet to the door of the kitchen from the sink it was five and a half feet to the back door from there and we were standing two feet outside and that's as far as we got before that thing exploded yes okay so it it was that quick right. and when we did go back inside because i left him to play outside he was obviously very frightened i had to calm him down but i had to go back inside to see what was going on and I went inside and we had to turn the gas off at the mains because it was gas stove um, because the stove was destroyed. Right. And I'm looking around. This, this thing had literally blown itself apart. There was glass everywhere. And I mean everywhere. There was not a wall surface or anything else that did not have glass in it. Mm -hmm. And the ceiling, because we lived in a 200-year-old Queenslander farmhouse style farmhouse which had 14 mm -hmm. feet ceilings was the lid it had literally embedded in the 14 feet away ceiling and I called that the UFO effect yeah okay now I am very aware that that is very rare mm-hmm I'm very aware that that's very rare. Well, Even well, in, in 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 all honesty, yeah. it's rare now. Twenty five yes. years ago, it was happening all the time. Absolutely, right. absolutely. But you know, I'm aware that there are now safety features on canners that there weren't before. Yep. However, you won't find one in my kitchen, and and I love you guys. I do, but it's never going to happen again. Never. I don't even have a pressure cooker. And I so want to have words, support. I love you guys to death, but piss off. I'm not doing it anymore. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly how I feel about right. it, you know. And even as a chef, I wouldn't use a pressure cooker. We had pressure kettles that were used for making stock and soup, and mm -hmm. I insisted on using the brat, the brat pan. I sure. wouldn't use them, I refused point blank to use them. I so, wouldn't do it. So taking that story into consideration, yeah. it's the fear I always had. What you went through is mm -hmm. what I feared going through. Yeah. Okay? The first three times I did pressure canning, I had somebody on my phone 
And they were watching yeah. me literally minute by minute to make sure I was doing what I should have, listening, making sure the jiggler, because the first time I did it, I did dial gauge. I had a yeah. problem keeping the fluctuation of temperature, which yeah. really goes into the conversation we're having today. Oh, and we'll get to it. But that fluctuation in temperature really makes a difference. Okay. Because you can actually harm the food if it fluctuates too much. Okay. Yes. But I've gotten to a point where now I know what I'm listening for. I know what I'm watching for. I know yeah. what the procedures are. And I'm not as fearful. But this is 25 years post your situation. Yeah. There is a lot of safety locks and valves. And there's even a blowout spout now. So yeah. that if it ever gets so high that it's exceeding what it should, it should blow that spout out to release yeah. the breath. There's tons of different See, all things. Mine had, all mine had was the gauge mm -hmm. and the weighted jiggler thing. Right. That was literally right. it. That was right. all it had. There were, there's no, there was no emergency evac for the there system. There was nothing. Right. Was absolutely nothing. You know, and I just got myself out of there because I knew. Right. You know, and if we'd stayed there, that would have been weeks in hospital. Um, I have no doubt in my mind at all. Right. The, you know, I, I, all I'm trying to do is put out to people that the fear of what she went through, sorry, mm. is real. It, it is what you yeah. worry about because you, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I've seen the pictures of what you went through, not yeah. yours, but other people. The people have been I've, through, yeah. Yeah. I've seen years ago, I didn't have a camera phone. I couldn't right. take pictures of it. Right. I couldn't find right. her at my door and go, You'll never guess what just happened in my kitchen. It's right. not that you know, it, you know, it wasn't there it, to do. It wasn't know? there to do. But but no. the, the the whole thing I'm trying to get to is that that yeah. fear of that is still there, even with the safety things in there. Yeah, you just got to be specially careful about every step you're doing. Don't get distracted because if nothing no. else, your situation shows. Yeah. That's why they tell you don't take your eyes off of what you're doing when oh, you're pressure. I can't remember if I actually told you what had happened, but no, my you youngest didn't. had walked past and he'd played with the knobs because he was trying to help mummy. Yeah. And he saw that it wasn't on high and he turned it on high. Yeah. And literally that's all it took was a two year old trying to help, right. not doing anything malicious because obviously he doesn't know what he's doing. He was trying to help and he saw that it was down on a medium kind of temperature where it was just doing its thing and he whapped it up as high as it could go right and it literally i don't think that it took him longer than getting from the stove to me to let me know that that had suddenly started going off its face yeah I so agree. yeah that that's all it took was just one little toddler doing that so, so yeah but I don't want to put the fear of God into everybody else either because, no. like I said, what happened to me was incredibly rare. It, it did happen a lot more back in the day, but mm -hmm. it doesn't happen as much now because there are safety features. However, you won't get one in my kitchen. You won't get one in my house. You won't even no. get one sitting outside my house, and there won't be a pressure canner or pressure cooker or an Instapot anywhere near anywhere where I reside for that reason okay because they all do the same thing they all have a pressure release and to me it's a ticking time bomb waiting to explode so right. yeah no so blue is most happy just to water bath things and use more you know traditional methods right. of um preserving food <laughs> yes and that's the point. It, it's like that's why there's a lot of difference between us and what we do. And I wanted to have Tony here, obviously, because, he, you know, we're kind of sidekicks. And that's what we know, call ourselves. <laughs> well, I think all of this is Batman. I think we're just like, you know, sidekicks of the sidekicks at this point. <laughs> we're, we're Robin's sidekicks. <laughs> We'll just leave that alone. 
yeah so there you go there it is there's the disclaimer that's why i don't do it that's you know all of that kind of stuff now one of the things that we want to talk about is the ability to adapt now obviously if you're in a situation whether it's a short-term um crisis yeah that one where you <laughs> i'm so glad i could help you robin <laughs> <laughs> why thank you sparrow um <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> So, oh, oh god you. words are hard man so whether it's a short-term crisis like a rolling blackout that's occurring that's only like or it's a storm that's blown out the electric and gas and stuff like that and it's going to take a couple of weeks or whatever to fix chances are you're not going to be wanting to you know do any pressure canning or any canning or stuff yeah, canning in that typically is not the priority on your yeah, it's your not going to be the priority at that point okay right. what you're going to be looking at is so for example if this is a crisis situation where it's a major crisis which is going to be prolonged then you're right. going to be looking at different types of canning preserving your food and stuff like that so that's where we need to start looking at you know what's safe to do and what's not safe to do okay right. so but it's also having a willingness and the skills to be able to adapt what you already do to a situation that you're in in a crisis and there's right. no trying to adapt when you're in that crisis because right. your brain will not be able to cope with that on top of everything else that's going on I, I think the key to it is learning the skill set prior to the yeah. crisis. And yeah. if the crisis happens and it it adapts differently than you're wanting it to, yeah. you have the skill set to then just adapt it. You're you're there. It's just what do I have to do to make this work in this situation? Exactly. So. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, Pasta La Vista. How you doing? Oh, that is such a cool name. I love that name. I love that name. Can 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 I can we can we come back one thing? Yeah. You you had said that on the podcast you were on, there was a comment that made, but you never told people what the comment was that was made that brought this. Okay, so I had been speaking about certain types of preserving like it was more about this having the skills and not just the equipment mm -hmm. you know and and use it and knowing about the skills before you know anything kicks off it's all great having all the equipment but if you don't know how to use it how are you going right. to use it when when you've got all this other stuff going on right right so there was some we had brought up pressure canning and canning and i'd said to them as far as I knew, pressure canning over a campfire is not something that's going to be able to happen. But you can, if all you've got is like a ring of stones and a, and a you know, a fire going, mm -hmm. you're more likely to be able to do water bathing than you are going to be able to do pressure canning because pressure canning has to be kept to the constant temperature, constant heat, right? Right. Right. So, but someone had said in the comments during the premiere that, you know, they pressure can over a wood stove right and i actually came to you at that point and i said mm -hmm. what do you think about this because to me yes you may get a more controlled heat or more controllable heat mm -hmm. but a wood stove is still unpredictable yes because it's a live flame rather than you know mm -hmm. It's a live flame you have to consistently keep an eye on, whether you're adding more fuel to it or having to take right. fuel away or close valves or whatever, you know. And, and if you're using the, the let's say, the top of the wood stove, yeah. the control over regulation of that heat is going to be far less at, uh, attainable because it takes a long time for that heat to come up or, or come down or yeah. go up. 
when it's a surface you're regulating from something that's not the control yeah yes so yeah so like one of the, that's that was one of the things that i really wanted to double check with you and that's kind of where all of this has kicked off from to be honest was that conversation right, right. um yeah. we have been talking for a while about different things but this I, I just really wanted to address this because i felt like actually um yeah it's, it's, a it's not talked really about people. often it's not. No, not talked about often. It's not talked about at all that I know of. And I watch a variety of channels that a lot of you probably haven't even heard of right. um, in all sorts of different genres, um, including everything from Psycho Peppers. Like, and I mean, like the proper, you know, tinfoil hat <laughs> in a bunker, you know. I thought you said Psycho Peppers, and, and I'm like, like yeah. I thought you said Psycho Peppers, and I was thinking, what, uh, Carolina Reapers, uh, Ghost Peppers? What are we talking about here? Sorry. Hmm. But that's what Pepper. I was talking about. You know, yeah. So, yeah. you know, from them to country wildlife type of places and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different variety of channels that I right. watch. And I watch canning channels. Right. You know, I've never had this conversation Okay, so I wanted to have this conversation because I honestly believe it's something that's really necessary. And if you look about what's happening at the moment, there's a lot of instability of what's going on. You've got a lot of people in this country can't afford to turn their lights on, let alone preserve food. Um, a lot of people that are resorting to cooking outside and they kind right. of think, well, if I can cook outside, I can do this other stuff outside. You know, and I wanted to have the conversation because I don't want people to end up, you know, in a bad situation because they've had bad advice. Right. So that's why we're here. And and okay. and it, this probably would have fallen under the disclaimer part, but it just hit my head. Yeah. We're not saying people don't do it. We're not saying do do it, no. don't do it. We're just saying this is our perspective from our point of view yeah. based on what we know. So. If you do it, don't come at us. We're not no. here to do that. No. We're just explaining what the safety guidelines are out there for, and that's yeah. to protect you and your family. And the guidelines aren't just what is written in a book. The guidelines right. are from the from the manufacturers. The guidelines that we're talking about are from people who have done the research and right. what suggested usage and, and safe usage and guidelines are with and that goes across the board of what we're talking about today. So, yeah. So, first off, we want to talk about safe kitchen process. Yeah. Now, in any kind of crisis, you're going to, you, you may have a situation where you have limited access to water. So if you've got no power, you may have no water. Okay, yes. let, let's, let's, let's look at it like that. So if you've got no power, you may not have water because your pumps may not be working. Even in an urban environment, without any actual pumps working, the chances are that your water is going to run out very, very quickly as soon as the pipes right. do. So you're not going to be wanting to waste a lot of water on doing certain things so you're going to be keeping things like your dishes down to a minimum which means that you may not have two or three boards to do your meat your veg your dairy mm -hmm. in separate you know whatever right. you're doing which means then you have to look at an order of operations of what you are going to do on the, bo the board that you have so what you want to look at if you're prepping for any kind of processing or even just cooking then you're going to want to look at your veg and your fruit first mm -hmm. because that's less likely to have any problems as far as um, cross-contamination. Okay, so you want to put your least likely to cause cross-contamination issues on the board first. Okay. Fruits and vegetables would be first. Fruits and vegetables first. Okay. Right. Right. Then you're going to be looking at things like dairy and bread. Yep. Okay. So you're baked in your dairy. Then you're going to be looking at things like raw meat. 
okay so if you're cat looking at canning or whatever with raw meat that is the very last thing that you put on that board so where you would normally probably chop the meat up first and then get into the veg you're going to do it the other way around so it's teaching yourself to do it the other way around because you're not going to have that extra water to do the extra washing up you want to be able to have that board use it properly use it safely and not cause any extra issues because let's be fair if it is a grid down shtf situation <coughs> you've got enough issues the last thing you want is a dose of salmonella <coughs> you know or e coli Excuse or me. any of those wonderful things that could occur right. so having a proper order of operations when it comes down to what you're doing with what at any one time is really important I okay. think I think I think the real re reality, following the first take we had on this yeah. and the conversation we we've had since then, mm. the reality is is that in a SHTF situation, yeah. you really are limiting your resources and and I I personally and I think Blue agrees with me. Yeah. Do not see where canning is going to be my priority at that point in time. Certainly not for the first three months. No. You know, but not again, even for the first six months, to be fair. That, that's Unless you and I thinking. That, that, that yeah. doesn't mean everybody else thinks that way. But I, I, I know from my own perspective, because mm. here we come to what all this really comes down to is being prepared and another yeah. individual we reached out to yeah. in conversation said the same thing. There's enough food in my pantry to take me where I need to. Canning is not going to be my priority. No. So the, the only re issue that I would see and why people would panic to pressure can or to water bath as fast as possible is if their freezers were dead. And they're trying sure. to save that, that yeah. food as fast as possible. And the quickest way that you can do it is to can it all up. Then I can yeah. understand people doing it that way, trying Agreed. to get it in as fast as possible. There are other ways. That's not what we're going to discuss today. That's not what we're no. discussing today. So, yeah, hang on a sec. We've got a couple of comments here in chat. Now, Nanny Tam did say, I went through something similar in the 70s. My mother-in-law was teaching me to pressure cook a chicken. It blew and there was chicken absolutely everywhere. Yeah, the fear of this stayed with me to this day. It does. Okay, so I get that. Um, Annette says that she wants to try a hand at dehydrating veg. Awesome. Um, Nanny Tam says, I would consider pressure canning if it was outside, away from the house, vehicles, etc. but wood cooking is us, is unpredictable. I'm a chicken. You're not a chicken. <laughs> you're not no, a chicken. No pun intended no, there, right? No, no pun intended, but you are not a chicken. No. Okay, and apparently they're talking about the chicken. They're, they're cats and stuff now. Um, yes. Nyla says the pressure canners are so much safer than 25 years ago. They have more safety devices. So if you have a neighbor who used the pressure canner, ask if you can come watch them. I understand that. I get it. But I live in the UK. And if I don't live in the UK, I live in Australia. Neither of those countries does everybody pressure can. In fact, it's a very not, brand not new. Only. Sorry. It's even more brand new than it was 25 years ago. And very few people have them. And not only that, we've them. talked right. about the ex yeah. we've ex talked about the expense part of that for you guys as well. Yeah, well, we will be talking to about that later on. Yeah. Okay, no worries, Ashley. You do what you gotta do, Hi, Thanks, for being here. Thanks. Okay. So, so, so I, I ultimately yeah. what you're trying to say, just to recap real quick for everybody, you're yeah. just trying to say that there is still safety steps that have to be taken. You can't just go into this willy nilly and then expect no. that it's not going to be a problem. Absolutely not. That's and fair. hygiene is going to be a higher priority in those kinds of situations than it yeah. is now. And it's enough now. Let's be honest. Right. We're still sterilizing our surfaces. We're still sterilizing our jars. We're still sterilizing our lids. We're still sterilizing our equipment. Yeah. But in that kind of situation, you need to sterilize everything. 
more so. You know, yeah, you've got great. to make sure that everything is absolutely 150% spotless. Great. And you again, know, coming from two no different problem. Yeah. Coming from two different locations that do it two different ways, theoretically two different ways. Yeah. One thing we've always agreed on is the hygiene and safety standards that have to be maintained regardless of how you're doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's really, really important because right. especially in that kind of situation where you are going to be wanting not to make mistakes. Correct because you can't afford to because that food could be all you've got for the year of that type right in reality the last thing you want are blown lids and blown jars and in addition the last thing you want to do i mean you're trying to keep your family around you don't want them getting sick because yeah, just like exactly. you said in that situation yeah. they get sick it's highly 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 oh, yeah. assumed you're going to have lack of medical care out there absolutely Absolutely. The other thing that you need to take into consideration as well is if you do have issues with water at that point, you need to make sure that you're using distilled or severely boiled water. Um, yes, agreed. Any food items, because you don't want that going in there either, because otherwise that's going to taint everything and it could make it a lot worse than it possibly could be. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and no one needs typhoid and no. you know no one needs these things okay no. no so let's let let's just make sure that we keep our hygiene 150 percent safe and we keep our order of operations safe we do all of that kind of stuff but we've done all that let's just say we've done all that and now we're going to be looking at safe power and fuel usage to run canners in the water bath okay and i'm going to leave this up to Mr. Tony over here, because he's got all the information. And I'm just going to sit back and have me brew. I don't know enough coffee. Safe power and fuel usage for to, to run. Okay. Mm. Is this where you want me to talk about the stove, the vessels and the, uh, and the devices? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I just okay. wanted to make sure we were at the right yep. spot. Okay. Yes. So, and I'm going to give you a quick rundown. First and foremost, and we both agree to this 100% in take one and our furthering conversations. Again, I'll say it one more time. Do your own research. You need to read your instruction manuals or owner's manuals or owner's guides for each piece of equipment or device that you're using. Because... Yeah. There's a lot of times that that information will contain what you need to know regarding whether you can or cannot can properly, okay? Yeah. So let me give you a quick example. First and foremost, we all know that the standard ways to do it are either going to be gas or they're going to be electric. If those two things are out, what's the next options? Well, in the UK, you guys have the induction single burners, we have option for other single burners. Um, we have, um, like, I've got my little electric hob, but I wouldn't use that for canning or water buffing. Right. it's got a built-in thermostat on it that turns it off after a few minutes. Oh, you got one of those. Yeah, it turns itself yeah. off. So it's okay for doing the odd video here and there for when I need to do it for, for you know, for, right. for, for YouTube. But it's no good for doing things like water buffing that's got to go on the gas stove or outside outside okay so here here's really what it comes down to and we talked about this yeah. so you you need to, you, let's just assume you don't have gas or electric let's just move yeah. into that okay well yeah. actually let me come back to that just for a second because there is a possibility you may not have water but you could have gas or electric or the two of them yes the whole point that we're trying to get to is make sure that the stove which is the device yeah is able to be utilized for water bath or pressure canning or i'll even throw steam canning in there which that usually yeah. is not an issue because it's a small product mm -hmm. small amount of water okay um when i went to look and find out whether i could water bath can and steam can or is that not steam can pressure can um and it was more on the pressure can side i didn't really look mm -hmm. into it on the other side until later i wish i had 
we have a glass top stove. And so I had to talk yeah. to the manufacturer of the stove. I went and did my research, but I wasn't really finding a direct yes or no. So I reached out to them, called them, and they said, you can on our stove do pressure canning. Make sure you're not, you know, sliding it, dinging it, nicking it, because that could cause cracks as well. Their, their biggest concern was with the water bath canning because of the weight of the water. Yeah. Okay. That could in itself possibly create cracks yeah. on the glass stove. And so we got more specific into what was the weight of the product with the water. I mean, we went through some scientific stuff that I had never. That's, considered. that's fine. You know, because that, that's what we need. That's what we need. We need the manufacturers of these things to come back to us and go, do you know what? This is the safe usage for our product. Right. Right. This is what we're happy with you doing. This is what we're not happy with you doing. Right. And right. every product is different. And they are. There's some out Everyone. there that say don't use glass top stoves. Yeah. There's some that don't have any information on it at all. I mean, so you don't yeah. know what you're running up against. But exactly. the lady specifically told me, and she went through their records and their stuff based on the equipment. An all American was not recommended for my glass top stove because of the weight, okay, right. of the product itself with the water. If you're using it for water bath canning, now you can use it yeah. for steam or pressure canning, and that was okay. But water bath canning, you needed to use either a stock pot or a traditional water bath yeah. canning device, okay? Um, and the weight with the water still met under the threshold of of causing a problem so they were okay with it okay yeah not not all are going to do that you also need to do that with your gas stoves as well as your coil stoves the coil burner yeah. stove because there are some coil stoves that can't handle the weight of the water mm -hmm. in a water bath canner either so you know I, you, you need to check with your manufacturer just to play yeah. the safety game okay moving forward you also have we went back we went and talked as well just a second ago about you having the small single stove there are some single burner stoves there are some out there that you can use now those are glass top but i would be very again check with your manufacturer of it and there are yeah. some gas burners like propane yeah. burners i guess is what they're called in the end of it, none of it really matters unless you make sure that the BTU is being put out by that product, which, uh, which is gas or propane, doesn't burn mm -hmm. hotter than 12,000 BTUs, okay? We'll come back to the BTU conversation. Yeah, because yeah, okay? we need that explained because not all of us know about the BTUs. And I sat yeah. there when he was explaining it to me the other day and I was going, meow. <laughs> Okay, so I did get a little bit more information on that, and we'll we'll come back awesome. to that. Okay. 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 So that that's one thing you need to make sure of. Now, the reason why that makes a difference, because most people are like, "Well, why does it matter?" Well, it does matter, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. There are camp stoves out there that you can use, or there are what is called canning stoves for outdoor use. Yeah. They come in two burner burner sets, one burner set, sets, or tri burner three burners okay mm -hmm. the problem is a lot of those burn a lot higher and if you're using a presto canner steam canner it's made out of aluminum it is going to warp the inside of that device if it's burning too hot inside so it does matter it makes a difference now some people yeah. do it some people take a chance with it but if you want to possibly blow five hundred dollars it, it doesn't cost that much but if you're repeating the process multiple times yes. you're going to consume five hundred dollars really quick whether it's the burner okay. or the vessel or whatever it is so yeah I, I say check your manufacturer on both the burner the stove the equipment you're using and whether it can be done or not now let's yeah. go really quick back into pressure canners okay all american is typical uh, Presto canner is typical here in the U.S. There are one or two other ones. Um, there's electric, and I'm not going into that conversation. This has nothing to do with that specific point, so we're not going to well, talk about no it. Point. We're talking about a situation where there is no electric, there is no gas, so you kind of screwed anyway if you got one of right. them, so we're not talking about it, okay? We're not talking about that, yeah. Done. People do it. Let them do it. We don't do that. We're moving on past it. Now, I will throw exactly. out the steam I will throw out the steam canner one more time, and there's a specific reason. A steam right. canner, and, and again, go do your research. We didn't do a lot. 
spot in this segment to talk about it, but I do want to bring it up just for a second. A steam canner uses very little amount of water and it's made out of aluminum. So it's lightweight, it's small. And theoretically, if I remember correct, you can't do more than five or six or seven jars at a time in it. Okay. Yeah. It's not going to be overwhelming for any item, but you're back to the BTU conversation. Okay. Yeah. So that again, it, all that we just talked about is basically under the guise that you have gas or electric in your house. Okay. Now let's have the conversation real quick. What if we don't have gas or electric? Is it recommended that we do it on an open flame? <laughs> from my research, from the people we've talked to, fellow content creators, it is not recommended to do it over an open flame or on a on a wood stove for the simple Can we fact. Say that this wasn't any old co content creator. This was someone who is paid to teach this stuff. And has and is very and has for many decades this is not someone who's just another content creator right. this is someone who knows what she's talking about and right. will literally knows the book inside out back to front and could teach the book a few things yes right okay yes. so you know we're not just talking about any old person we are talking about here, here, you know, here let me let me do you one better. Who is right. paid by the professionals and the schools to teach. I so know. I, let me let me do it. Let me do it this way. I know yeah. that Blue's talked to a couple of people. I've talked to three channels, content creators, who all have more than twenty thousand subscribers. One of yeah. them has way way more than that. One of them's in between. So these are yeah. people that have done this for a while. No what they're doing they're very successful at what they do okay yeah. so and i did my own research i and blue yeah. did as well we yeah. we could not find anything that said this is a recommended practice so if you do it you're doing it on your own you're taking your own chances the inconsistency in the heat is the biggest problem with the whole thing the secondary thing especially if you're using sorry guys Especially if you're using the Presto canner, which is a softer metal, you yeah. have a tendency to warp your device. Yeah. So I'm just, I, I wouldn't do it and I won't be doing it and I won't move forward doing it regardless of the situation. So, yeah, 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 warping is not fun. No, warping is not good. It's not good for any pot, let's be honest. No. I mean, like, if anyone of you guys has cooked on open flames or gas stoves or any of that kind of stuff for any amount of time, a lot of your pots in the, it will probably have some kind of warping going on mm -hmm. so that they can't be used on an electric stove anymore because they've got the big wobble in wobble. the middle. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what we're talking about now. In a pressure counter situation, that could be really scary. Right. I agree. I agree. You know? Yeah. We don't um, want that in a pressure counting situation because you're gonna you're creating pressure on the inside. Right. Which is almost so, like your vacuums and stuff like that and all that kind of stuff and, 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 and vacuums and pressure and stuff like that is like in an aeroplane and the window blows out. So are you are you ready to move into BTUs? Yes. Okay. Okay. So BTUs I are now. <laughs> Huh? I shush now. No, no, I wasn't shushing. I just know we've been talking for a while, so I'm trying to keep us on That's track. That's okay. It's all good. Um, so we and Blue and I were both like, "What does BTU stand for?" I could never find it. Yeah. Well, I found it, and you're going to be shocked, my friend, as to what BTU stands for. What does BTU mean? British Thermal Units. Oh, for goodness' sakes! Really? <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I never heard of BTUs I, I, until you said it the other day, and I was like sitting there going, "What is a BTU?" Okay, so what this specific definition, what it's talking about, is an air conditioner, but it still applies whether it's a stove or an air conditioner or whatever. Yeah. They tell you how much energy your device is using to do all what it needs to do. Okay. Yeah. In the case of propane or gas, single unit burners, camp stoves, whatever it may be, it or even your gas stove for that matter, 
Yeah. You want to know that how much energy is being dispelled, in this case it would be flame is, and heat, is being dispelled to the surface of the device, the vessel you're using to do yeah. these things, okay? It has always been recommended, and it is by USDA. Again, me and Blue have talked about this. She, She's not a usda or because she doesn't live in the U.S. But the no, US I do not. <laughs> when, when we're talking about pressure canning, the USDA is the book she would go to because they've done yes. the work, they've done the research. Yes, you know th that would save in the situation if she was to do pressure canning. Based on that, this book says do not use anything that is higher than twelve thousand BTU. So yeah. there's that. Okay, yeah. um, there are some that do higher than that. There are some people that have figured out the way to do that. Mm. That specifically, though, again, going back to these content creators we're talking about, one of them said, mine does 20,000, but I can only use the All-American on it. I cannot use the Presto on it. Well, that's yeah. because the All-American is made of a thicker metal, and so yeah. it can absorb that heat a lot easier and not damage the product. But, yeah. again, do your own research. You figure yeah. out what you're going to do. There's that. So we can yeah. move on past BTUs. There we go. Yeah. Fair enough. Very cool. Okay. So. Oh, what's next? Well, we got this. Well, we, we know why you don't pressure can, so we don't have to go over yes. that. You've already stated that. Yes. Um, pros and cons of pressure canners in a crisis situation. Well, we've already yes. went through that, that there it, it's a big con. I think you would give yourself more of a headache pressure can yeah. in a crisis. I, I think also uh, in a sort of like having to bug out situation. Right. Um, a pressure canner for me, in my way of thinking, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm just, and I'm not trying to be biased here or anything because I'm not, okay? To mm -hmm. me, as much as that pot can be used as a stock pot, if nothing else, you've got mm -hmm. a bunch of little stuff. It's got right. to go with it. Okay, so you've got all your gaskets, you've got gauge, you've got your backup gauge, you've got all your weights, measures, blah, 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 little dinosaur thingies and stuff that sit on there and all sorts of weirdness that you guys have to go with those. <laughs> and if you're in a situation where you're not really stable, for me, that's a lot of little bits to keep hold of. And if you lose one of those little bits and you don't have a backup... Mm -hmm. You're kind of screwed at that right. point. And then all you've got is a very glorified stock pot. I would rather yep. personally, my personal choice would be to take the stock pot. Because I, I, it doesn't matter if I've got little bits because I don't got little bits. I've just got the stock pot. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think, I think after we talked last night, I have mm -hmm. to concur 100% with you. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. I agree. Yeah. See, the other thing is as well, okay, um, we, I mean, like, uh, let, let's talk about this for a second, okay? So we can talk about thermal shock and all that kind of stuff till the cows come home. And most of the people here have got anything to do with canning in any way, shape, or form know about that stuff. Yes, so I agree. thermal shock, cloth, the... Uh, Words is hard. A thermal okay. shock happens if you put cold stuff in hot water or hot hot jars in cold water. So you want to avoid that. You want to have cold contents in cold jars going into cold water and vice versa, right? Yep. Otherwise, you can have explodey jars. And we don't want that in any situation. That's a very bad situation, right? Right. right. So... Um, Uh, did your brain just right now? Let's what? have a look at that. Where Nanny Sam's going. Words are hard. They are hard. Yes. Um, one of the main conversations that we ended up having for me this morning, for you last night, was if we were in a grid down situation or in a major situation, would we really be thinking about canning? <laughs> No, 
No, I mean that's that's. Re I'm glad you went there because that's the reality of it. Let, yeah. I mean, let let let's be fair, okay? We've just had in the last couple of years we have had a really good look at human nature and what humans do if they're faced with a crisis, even if it's a smaller crisis that's blown out of proportion. Right. Okay. When grown adults are fighting over toilet paper, bare fist fighting in front of children that are less than 10 years old and less than five year olds beating each other with handbags and brollies at dawn over the last new roll. Can I just say the yeah. last thing on anyone's mind is whether we're going to be canning our food or not. And, and that's the reality. The other, yeah. there's, there's two other things that go along with that. The cost of the supplies, if you don't already have them, good luck yes. with that. Number two, <laughs> if you can locate them, good with good luck with that. That's and number amazing. three, the reality, the reality is that we've not even talked about, which is a primary reality. If you have no water, you have no heat, you have no gas, let's just assume that. Yeah. Odds are your drinking water, even if you have a supply, is probably tainted and unusable anyways. Yes. You know, so, yeah, that. I just want to say hi to Mike. He's just turned up in the chat. Oh, hi. Um, Guys, if you're not following UK Urban Prepper and you live here in the UK, actually, you probably get a lot out of his channel, to be honest, anyway. Um, he's got some really, really good information on there. And, and and yeah, he he has some really good guests on his podcast. You could go, you should go and check him out because you might recognise some of them. I'm mm -hmm. just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. You might recognise one or two, maybe, you know. I'm just saying. Right. So I, I think, I think um, Glenda makes a valid point that we need to talk about. What's yeah. so interesting, not once did it, that time frame worry her because she had stock pantry, including foods yes. and non-food supplies. The whole point of what we're trying to tell you is be prepared and have a skill set. That skill set yeah. is stocking your pantry or getting ready ahead of whatever can be involved yeah, so. exactly. And that's the point. The point is having the skills, having a yes. backup plan. Yes. The whole point is this, is having a backup plan. If you're a pressure canner and you're used to pressure canning and, you know, you find yourself in a situation where that is not a safe option, it's not a suggested option, you might end up with a, the f remote suddenly finding out that your pressure canner is, right. you know, the aluminum variety you're going to find that you can't use it in the way that you think you can anyway. So you're right. better off trying to water bath or find other methods of preserving your food. Uh, but there was a really interesting point that was brought up. If you are in a long-term crisis or long-term SHTF situation, and by long-term, I mean longer than six to 12 months, right? You're probably, if you're in a safer, safe location you could probably look at setting up a garden you're going to be wanting to set up some kind of safety sort of you know situation for mm -hmm. the preservation of that food the chances are you're going to want to use your fresh before you use your, any of your preserves so if you still got preserved food at that time you're going to keep that for your backup right okay so and then you're just going to eat the fresh as it comes through but obviously we do get gluts we get you know more than we can eat we grow more than we can eat, so we need to preserve it to get over the parts of that, you know, time when we may not be able to, okay? Um, I, I, I think Glenda also makes another value. I just want to catch yeah. it before I lose it. It's not always a world emergency that's important. That's the whole point no. we're trying to make. If you're ready for the yeah. small crises, more than likely you're better prepared for the world things yes. when yes. they happen than most people will be. That's all we're trying exactly. to say. Exactly. The other, the other thing is like, okay, I completely lost my point. Yeah, okay, so... Sorry. You might have a garden and you might yeah, have a safe place. Yeah. 
But if you're still under that whole situation where things may not be as safe on the outside of your nice little bubble that you've got mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. do you really want to be making a lot of smell and a lot of noise cooking, mm -hmm. preserving? Yeah. yeah. You know? In other words, don't make yourself a target. Yeah. Okay. Exactly that. Exactly that. Because, you know, because where, the, where this came from was a very valid point. You're sitting there. Let's yeah. just say you're making jam or salsa or something simple and easy. I don't even care what it is. You could be just canning. Like, say, for example, you guys have gone out fishing. You found trout. You found salmon. You're going to can up the salmon, right? Mm -hmm. That is one of the smelliest things that I could possibly think of to can, apart mm -hmm. from sardines. And I've done all three. So, you know, it, it stinks. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. It stinks to do it. And it's something right. that I would only can on the outside of my house. I would never do it on the inside again. Just mm -hmm. ask me how I know. But the point is, um, you know, it's do you really want to take that risk of that kind of level of food cooking smell Mm -hmm. getting beyond your location yep. and is it something that is a safe thing to be doing or is it going to be safer for you to be using maybe air dry salted methods right to cure your fish meat whatever mm -hmm. that doesn't include a lot of smoke you know right cooking right. smells that kind of thing so it's looking at the situation in hand but it's also having those skills as well like i said this is not about other preserving methods what we're looking mm -hmm. at is the safety of canning in a crisis right so we're looking at the safety issues we're looking at the proper usage and we're looking at the questions that people actually bring up right and these right. were questions that were brought to us and and situations that were brought to us while we were did you know while we were talking about this to other people and saying to them, you know, what do you think about this? And it was like, well, would you really be worried about it? And it's a valid point. It is a valid point. I, I, I think what we can conclude with the origination of the conversation, it's not recommended to open flame or wood stove do pressure no. canning. If you're going to water bath it's, canning, you need to be very careful about it. Yeah. If you're water bathing, you basically need to babysit it. Yes. Um, and you, it's very heavy on the water usage. So if you don't have right. fresh forms of water, it's very heavy on the water usage because you have to keep that water level at least an inch above the lid. Right. Okay. So whether you're, um, whether you're, Oh gosh, words are gone again. Whether I, I guess I missed what you were going towards. So if if you don't have okay, all right, let's start again. Okay, so you don't have a fresh supply of water. You have to go and collect the water every day. Right. You have to boil it. You have to de you have to de uh, sterilize it. Sterilize, yeah. Okay. Distill it. Distilling. Distilling. I, I knew that's what you meant, but it was still sterilized. That was the word I was looking for, right? So you got to do all those. You right. cannot use the water you can't drink for canning. No. You can't use it for water bathing. You can't use it for pressure canning. If you have not boiled it, if you have not distilled it, mm -hmm. you can't use it because that can leach into your bottles. You know, you get as yep. much softening off a lug lid situ situation as you would do with a two piece mason jar right. situation. Agree. Agree. Okay, 100%. so you're gonna get water get in there. The last thing you want is that filth to get inside your jars. So you're gonna have to use boiled water or filtered water or whatever you're doing. Right. It's a lot of work. The, okay. uh, here, here, here's the honesty of the whole conversation. I know, here's the honesty of the whole conversation. Do your yeah. prep work now. Don't let yes. it become an issue you're dealing with later. That's really what it yeah. comes down to. 
yeah the the point is this right it, and and it was a point that i made when i was doing mike's podcast right you might have all the equipment if you don't know how to use it it's taking up space that you don't need it to right you know because if you're not learning to use it now you can't expect that in a crisis situation whether it's a small crisis whether it's that you've got three months where all of a sudden you've had every bill in on the in the that's possible dumped on your head okay mm-hmm. it could be a three month situation of that it could be you know rolling blackouts due to fuel source shortages or whatever it could be the whole shtf situation mm-hmm. you cannot expect your brain to be able to manage with learning new skill sets that you right. are going to need to survive on that situation as it goes because your brain is already overloaded right with everything else I, I think really we could sum up the rest of what we haven't talked about with these two points because I think they're very valid points and I'm yes. glad you put them in there. Make sure if you're going to do it and you're going to worry about it, make sure you have extras in case you can't find those parts yes. later on down the road. Second yep. thing is make sure you're doing an annual, if not more, check on the equipment to make sure it's functioning and nothing's gone haywire. Yeah. So. And make sure you've got backups. Yes. Make sure that you've got backups. If you need gaskets, have a, have an extra one. If you need gauges, have an extra one. Make right. sure they're all checked. Do all of that kind of stuff. That's entirely up to you. If it looks yep. like you're you're going to be needing new lids, get new lids. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I'm aware that the one piece lug lids that I use, I I use them until they start looking like they're deteriorating, and I've still got j- lids that I've used for the last five years. Right. I'm not had a problem with because they're still brand new. They're not buckled, nothing like that. So I can still use them. Right. So, I you know, but I still have several different sizes of other lids because I use a lot of recycled lids, or recycled jars. So I have to have different size lids to make sure that I've got the backups for that. So right. I've always got backup lids for all my jars. It's just... I make sure that I've got those. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Okay. So I think. Yeah. So the only other thing that I want to say to you is this: if you are interested in channels that have information on skill sets, okay. Now, the what I mean by skill sets is off-grid living that you wouldn't normally expect. Um, Different kinds of uses of of off-grid equipment that you wouldn't ordinarily expect. Some of it you will, some of it you won't. There is a list that will be going out on my Patreon for Patreons. Okay, so um, that will be going out to them. Now, if you do want to become a Patreon, it's only, I think it's $2 a month. Two bucks a month, you get all the recipe cards for everything that I put out. You get all the um, guides for all of the budgeting lives and stuff for the, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, you know, for two bucks, I think you're you're doing pretty well. Can I just say? All right. Can you yeah, no, just? I do. I do. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I think I think we summed it up. I mean, I think it really is what it is. I mean, yeah, I think so. you, you need to set you need to set priorities, and your priority priorities yeah. need to be what's going to be beneficial to you and your family at the time that you have to make those decisions. So yeah, and learn your skills now. When now, right in the comfort of your home, in the way that it is on an everyday basis, you know. Um. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, you've got all your backups you could possibly require at home, you know, while it's nice and quiet, you know. So Heather, do it more. Heather said she just did a survival basic class. She does nice. have some workouts for a go bag she composed. Cool. Yeah. That is very cool. We have a Jasper Pudding Face in the house. Hello, darling. How are you doing? Yay. 
Yeah. Um, so the only other thing that I want to say is that if you guys have really enjoyed this, please let us know. Because we're please. in the process at the moment of deciding whether to make this into a podcast or not, where we will be talking about skill-based um, preparedness. Yes. Yeah, skill-based preparedness, okay? Um, again, again, so everybody understands what we mean by that, being prepared yeah. with skill sets that yes. you can adapt to your situation regardless of what it is that happens. Yeah, so whether it's an it's something that's useful to you on an everyday basis or it's, you know, it could be something that will help you out in a crisis, a minor crisis or whatever happens because life happens, let's be honest, from anything from that until until the really big like zombie-style apocalypse kind of thing goes on. So that's what we're looking at. And if we do do that, it will be set up on its own channel and it will very probably be set up on Rumble rather than on here because that's just the way that YouTube goes. But we will see how it goes. Can, so, can I make an offering, yeah. my friend? Yes. Over the next 24 hours, anybody that puts a comment under this video for you, so I will check it again at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. Anybody that has put the comment in, can me, will be entered into me giving them a complete guide to home canning. So what 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 do they need to put? Can me. Can me in the comments to enter for the canning book. Yes. Right. And that's the proper comments, not the live comments on the side here. Okay, so you have no, to go to the proper, proper comments. comments. Yes. Proper, proper yeah. comment. Okay. Um, and we will draw that next week. Okay. But you only got the 24 hours. Yeah, you've only got 24 hours. And then we will pass be that. Pick that we do. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Okay. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Um, there we go. Now, I will be over on Tony's late night on Friday night. Ta da! To, okay. to answer, answer Nanny Tam, yes, there will be a late night tonight. Yes, so there will be a late night tonight, um, and we will see how we go. Okay? Yes. Yes, there's a live tonight, Nanny Tam. Yes. There is. There is. And I'm going to be over there. And yeah. I've got no idea what shenanigans this person has set up. but um, Well, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be an interview Right. Or we might we might poke around at some music for a little while. Who knows? Oh, you're gonna I, I, get yeah. yourself really in trouble, no, dude. I, I, I'm pushing the bear. I'm poking the oh, bear. I don't so, like the bear. <sighs> okay. Um, um, that is about three a.m. our time, Mike. <laughs> unfortunately, yes. It is about 3 a.m. our time, to be fair, um, until we put our clocks. Yes. The way that they have and, to go. And, in and then it only like goes to 4 o'clock, so it's not buying you a bunch of time. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all good. It's no worries. That's fine. Um, I I'm understand. Not at that point anyway, because that's when Tanny yeah. goes to work. So, you know, I, I'm, you know. It, it is what it is. I get it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. It was great to see you. Um, yes, um, we will see you again next week. Don't forget, Tuesday is new video day, and there will be one coming out. Ta, 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 ta. And I will see you again. We will see you again next week. Love you guys, heaps. Bye bye. Mwah. Mwah.